Welcome back. In this video, we're going to talk about how to iterate through a 2D array and a jagged array. So this is kind of a follow up of the previous video where we talked about how to create those. If you already got that down, then that's great. Let's get started with iterating through them. Monday.com is your visual project management solution. This is the tool that allows you to see where every task or project stands with a single glance. With a fully customizable interface, you can create the exact workflow that you need for you and your team to get stuff done. Monday.com is available on mobile and integrates well with some of the most popular tools out there. So get your life in order by giving it a try for free. Link in the description. All right, so we're gonna start with just using a simple for loop. It's the most basic loop, it's the easiest to use, and that's what we're gonna start with. Pretty soon we'll get into for each loops, and that's an easier to use loop for collections. But for loops is really foundational and you should get some more practice with those as well. So there's two values that we need to know about. The first one is grades, dot length and that second one is actually going to be grades but then we're going to put square brackets and some index dot length so let's see what these give us all right so we get three and four it's a little tiny but hopefully you guys can see it down there so grades dot length is going to give us the number of rows one two and three grades index zero is going to give us the number of columns for that first row one two three four so that's where those values come from. These are dynamic, meaning if we change the index, the value is going to update. Now it says three and eight because there's three elements in this second array here. So we're going to use those inside of a for loop and it's gonna look a little something like this. Four, and we're gonna need another four. So I'll just put the bodies right now so we don't forget anything. And we'll just say int i is equal to zero. i is less than grades.length. I plus plus. Then for the other one, it's gonna say int k is equal to zero. K is less than grades. I'll put the square brackets here, dot length, k plus plus. Now what exactly do we put in the square bracket? Do we put a zero? Do we put a one? What do we do? Well, in order to keep this dynamic, we always want to reference the appropriate row. And that's what this outer for loop is for. It starts as zero, so it's going to grab the row with index zero the first one then it goes to one so it's going to grab the row with the index one which is this one right here and so forth so we can actually use i inside of those square brackets then inside of here all we got to do is say console dot right line and then access grades index i for the row and then k for the column and then at the end what i'm going to do is i'm just going to put a new line so we'll say console dot right line leave that empty and instead of making this all on its own line, we'll just say right, and we'll just throw a space in here so it's a little prettier. All right, let's run this, see what we get. All right, so the first two things here, those are coming from these console right lines, so ignore those for a moment. But then we have the exact same thing as we have right here. So it seems like it works. The cool thing though is we could resize this and it's still going to work exactly the same way. Now, if it's clearer to you, you could actually rename I and K to row and column. That way it says grades, row, column and it's easier to read if you want to do that go for it i'm just going to keep it at i and k for right now all right so that's how to iterate through a jagged array using this technique all right so if you want to do a similar thing with a 2d array it's definitely not as pretty but it is possible i'm going to be showing you guys that now so first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to convert this to a 2d array all you got to do is put a comma in there and get rid of these new ints and they all need to be the same size so we're gonna to have to crop out this data here all right so you can see this is not working so I'm gonna teach you guys something else. If you do grades dot get length and then pass in a zero, and then we'll do it again down here, grades dot get length, pass in a one, and you'll see what I mean in just a second. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna comment this out for a second and output it to see what values we get. When we dot net run, you can see we get a three and a four. So these numbers here, those coordinate to the number of rows and the number of columns. So you can see when we say get length zero, we get the number of rows, in this case three. And when we say get length one, we get a four, which is the number of columns. So we can use these to our advantage inside of our for loops. So let's give that a try. For the first one, we'll say get length zero. And the second one here will say get length one. To access this, get rid of these inner square brackets and replace it with a comma. All right, let's give this a try, see if we get what we want. And you can see we get the exact same table as we have up here. So that's how you do it with a 2D array, a little bit more complicated, but we were able to figure it out. 
Ooh, so that's what I got for this video, guys. Hopefully that was helpful for you, and hopefully you have a pretty good understanding of iterating through 2D and Jagged Arrays. Thanks, guys. I'll see you in the next video.